Did you know that 80% of people in prison grew up without the consistent presence of a father in the home? We're going to talk about fatherhood or the lack thereof in America today. Welcome to Crossroad Connection. We're speaking out for those left unheard. My name is David Scheringa. I'm the president of Crossroad Bible Institute and the host of your program. I have in the studio with me today a special guest. His name is Dan Kuyper. Dan is an author, a speaker, and we're going to talk about a book that Dan has written about fathering. But uh, first of all, welcome, Dan. Thank you. Good to be here. You are uh, living in South Bend? Indeed. Where you do your writing and you go around um, speaking on fatherhood. Mm. Um workshops in churches conferences all those kind of things absolutely and um, his book is entitled when father is a bad word mm -hmm. when father is a bad word um, well let's just start right from the top what what, what uh, drives a man to write a book about fathers <laughs> well uh, very interesting I was going through kind of a dark time in my life and I couldn't figure out why um, I had a wonderful wife. I had three little kids at the time. I had a successful business. Going to church every week, praying, reading God's word, and yet felt so distant from him. On and the surface, everything looked splendid. Absolutely. But inside, you were torn up. Inside was constant turmoil, and I could not figure it out. How old were you then? Uh early uh, late 20s actually okay late 20s late 20s and i was out for a bike ride just wrestling with god trying to find answers and i happened to pass a church down the street from our house and i saw the pastor's car in the parking lot and i didn't know him well but i knew him and i thought i need to talk to someone gotta talk to somebody gotta yeah. talk to someone so I went into his office and he invited me to sit down and I told him what I just said, that I was doing all the right things and yet there was this disconnect between me and God. Was there sort of an emptiness? Oh, absolutely. Mm. And, and it was like I couldn't do anything to fill that. Right, right. So it was a, a hole a, in the heart. A, Absolutely. And it was just such a difficult place to be. And I shared this with a pastor and and he is the one who asked the profound question. He said, when you pray, how do you address God? Hmm. And I said, father. And he said, what does that word mean to you? Hmm. And immediately I said, a father is someone you can't trust. A father is someone you're afraid of. A father is someone you have to walk on eggshells around. A father is someone who breaks his promises. A father is someone who says he loves you and he never shows it. Now, I grew up with an alcoholic dad, and yet at that time, my dad was sober. And I was thinking, well, my he prayers are answered. He was a recovering alcoholic? Recovering alcoholic. God saved him from that. Something I prayed for my entire life. But that doesn't negate the, the, the years of your youth. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that is a big problem we often make is that we focus all our attention on the alcoholic as if to say, well, if they can get their act together, then everyone else will be fine too in the household and that is just not true. Uh, God was able to spare my dad from alcoholism and this happened be just before I got married. So the person my kids know as grandpa was not the man I knew as dad. Hmm. And they find it hard to believe even some of the stories that I tell. But even though dad was sober, when I met that pastor that day, I was carrying all this angst sure. inside, and he was the one who was able to make that connection. Well, your book uh, provides a pretty graphic uh, uh, description of your youth and so forth. Mm -hmm. Your dad uh, never hit you or, the, or, the, or your siblings or your uh, mother, but he would get pretty violent verbally. Absolutely. Um, and he would drink on a regular basis uh, and d d become a different man than he was on Sunday. You said, I think in there that on Sunday he didn't drink. No, that wasn't <laughs> the Christian thing to do. We didn't right. drink on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday right. he course, was usually drunk. Yeah, and of course for an alcoholic that convinces them that they're not an alcoholic mm -hmm. because, uh, oh, I don't drink on Sundays. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, he would get angry. He would have a Jekyll and Hyde 
typical Jekyll and Hyde uh, personality, and uh, that's what you grew up with. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you go about getting beyond this or getting healed from it after this pastor's talk? Well, his questions actually began to send me on a journey uh, to find out who the Heavenly Father really was mm -hmm. because I was projecting my earthly father onto my Heavenly Father. It sounds and I think, like at that moment the lights went on for you. Oh, my word, yes. You my know, you word, You didn't realize yes. you were doing that. No, not at all. And then as I began to understand who our Heavenly Father really is and how his love for us will never end, how compassionate he is, how full of grace he is, how forgiving he is, uh, my life took a whole different course. And fast forward just uh, a few years, and my wife and I were at a family life marriage conference. Uh, she needs a refresher once in a while. So we went to this marriage <laughs> conference, and I'll never forget the, the leader of the conference just said, okay, here's a question for the men, and just shout out the answer from where you're seated. What is the first word that comes to your mind when you hear the word father? And I was sitting toward the back, and I hear strong, loving, encouraging. Not the words you thought of. But then there was silence, and someone was brave enough to say, absent. Then someone said, alcoholic. Mm. Someone said, abusive. Wow. And I turned to my wife, and I said, I'm going to write a book. I went to the Family Life people during the next break, and I said, I'm going to write a book. Mm -hmm. I can't stand to see people in such pain because I was one of those people. I'm still struggling with some of those issues, and I feel I need to do what I can to help people, uh, to introduce them to a father who will never leave them, who will always be there for them, who truly has their best interests in mind. Sometimes, well, it ha with being fatherless or having an absentee father or an abusive father, because basically it's, it's like an absentee father too. I mean, right, he's just not there for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that creates a hole in the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, we know this with our students. You know, we have uh, 45,000 students, and we know that most of them, didn't have a, a dad or had an abusive dad or some, you know, series of dads mm -hmm. uh, in, in the home. Now, frequently, that what we have seen, observed, that, that causes uh, anger issues. Mm -hmm. And then trying to fill that hole with substitutes. Mm -hmm. um, any of those kind of experiences for you? Uh, really not, thankfully. Um, I knew early on in the process that children of alcoholics are prone to become alcoholics right. if they choose to drink. So at a very early age, I decided I was not going to let that happen to me. I deserve better. Certainly my wife, my children deserve better. So you better. decided not so to I, drink. I never drank. I still, to this day, will toast the bride and groom with a glass of water. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I do not drink, and I'm not saying all drinking is wrong. I'm saying no. for me, for me, it is wrong. You want nothing to do with it. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it's probably poison for your system. Like yes, it, was it is. Daddy, <laughs> yes, know? it is. <laughs> um, now, we talk about people without fathers. Um, do you find that by simply teaching about the Heavenly Father that that magically gets them better? No but it is a big, big, big first step. They need to understand that they do have a father in heaven who may be very different from their earthly father. And uh, coming into relationship with him will help them to, uh, uh, to find the peace that they're looking for, to fill that void. But that can be a very long process. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first spoke with that pastor in his office that day, uh, he asked another interesting follow-up question. He said, now, how are things between you and Jesus? And I said, well, we're like this. He was misunderstood. People talked about him behind his back. They spit on him. They didn't get him. I can relate to that. And his comment was, you need to pray to him until you realize he and the Father are one and the same. Wow. 
Wow, wow, that's mm-hmm. that's uh, that's amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, how would you answer those who say, um, since there's been so many deadbeat dads and so many abusive fathers, um, and that gets in the way of of our relationship with God, so therefore we should think of God as our mother rather mm-hmm. than our father. Mm-hmm. Well, I think of the story which I actually cover in my book. Um, Rembrandt painted a picture called The Return of the Prodigal based on the parable of the prodigal Mm -hmm. son. And in his painting, he has a picture of the prodigal son on his knees and his clothes are tattered, his hair is a mess, he's missing a sandal. And the father figure is embracing him. And when I do my seminars and workshops, my Finding Father's Love retreats, I have that painting up on the big screen. So it's there through the whole telling of the story. But then I say, let's take a closer look at those hands. And we zoom in on the hands. And if you do an image search on the computer, you'll see what I'm talking about. Rembrandt on the father painted a man's hand and a woman's hand. And he Hmm. did that very intentionally. Hmm. He wanted to show that, yes, God is strong, and yet he's also compassionate. God is our protector, and yet he is our nurturer. And when I share that with a group of women, particularly women who have been sexually abused, who want nothing to do with God the Father just because he's a male, exactly, they melt because finally there is something about God the Father that they can latch on to. That they can that they can hold on to. How do you deal with the concept of headship? How do I deal with the concept of headship? I Because it is I have found as a writer myself and so forth and as a as a preacher and speaker, it's difficult uh, to even use that word headship without causing conniption fits. Mm -hmm. And I think it's related to this whole subject. There is so much misunderstanding about that. Uh, I would say, yes, I am the head of my household. And as such, I honor my wife. I value what she has to say. I will do anything for her. But yes, we talk about everything as it comes up. Um, but there is a mutual love and respect, and yet I believe God has given me a very special role as head of the house. Well, does that mean that she's under you? No. There's a hierarchy there? There's, that's, what it, that's what it sounds like. I know it sounds like that, and that is not the case. And uh, I understand what you're saying. There is just a lot of misunderstanding about that. People hear headship, and they think, well, what I say goes, and that isn't it at all. And in fact, your dad, when he was in his drunken state, was always demanding respect, right? Mm. I guess if you have to demand respect, you don't got it, right? <laughs> that, that is so true. That is so true. And yet I find one of the things that I really struggled with as a child was the fact that my mother then had to step up and she did devotions at the table. She, in a sense, became the spiritual head of the house. Hmm. And I resented that because that was my dad's role and he wasn't doing it. What did your dad think about the book? Uh, My dad passed away several years ago, and uh, before he died, I was asked to speak at a youth event on the subject of alcoholism. And before I did, I went to my dad, and I told him about this opportunity, and I said, I don't want to bring any shame to you, to the family. Hmm. I love you. I am so grateful that that you are a new man now. But I don't want to create any problems in the family system. And my dad said, you tell them whatever you need to tell them if it's going to give them hope and help. And that was the blessing that I was looking for. Uh, so 
my dad's looking down and I think he's, you guys are good. He, we're good. He, <laughs> he is, he is proud of me and I am proud of him. And I need to say that as well. Yes. I had a very, very difficult childhood when my dad was drinking, but when my dad was not drinking, he was one of the most kind, compassionate men you would ever meet. And if someone says you remind me of your dad, that to me is a great compliment. Well, Dan, thank you very, very much. Uh, Dan Kuyper, he's written this book, When Father is a Bad Word. Now, how can people get a hold of this book? Because that would be the thing, if they want to follow up, we've just scratched the surface here. How do they get a hold of this book? Well, and actually, I'm, I'm working on a discussion guide to it right now because a number of people have asked for sure. that. Uh, my website is findingfatherslove.com. Okay. Uh, I can even autograph a copy of the book if you order it through there. It's also on Barnes & Noble and Amazon. Okay, so Barnes & Noble, Amazon, but your website, say it again. When Father is a Bad Word. Or, I'm sorry, that's the name of my book, <laughs> findingfatherslove.com. Findingfatherslove.com. Mm-hmm. And I think you allude to the fact that you do conferences or speaking seminars by the same title? Yeah, I do Finding Father's Love retreats where we take basic themes from the book and we just delve into them, like how to trust a heavenly father when you couldn't trust your dad. What does unconditional love look like when we're used to love with strings attached and the importance of forgiveness in our relationship with so the heavenly father? So if there are father. churches out there that would like to do a retreat, um, they can call you, go to that findingfatherslove.com website. Yes. Can they get a hold of you there? They can contact me on the website. There's a form they can fill out, and I will speak to whoever will listen because I am so passionate about this subject. So you could come for an evening. You could do an adult Sunday school. You could do for a weekend, a retreat, mm-hmm. um, because obviously we know from our experience this is a widespread uh, issue. Mm-hmm. that many, many people are, are struggling with mm-hmm. and sometimes go down the wrong path in trying to uh, solve that problem. Uh, it, it, what it shows, of course, is that, you know, that fathers in God's design are, are vital because when, it, when it's not working, it causes huge problems, doesn't it? No question about that. And hats off to single moms. They, they have a very, very difficult job. Uh, and they can be a cheerleader and they can be a breadwinner, but the reality is they can never be a father. And yeah. we need to fill that void. We do. And I just want to say, finally, uh, none of us had a perfect father and none of us are perfect fathers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the fact is that there, there is forgiveness for the dads as well as they get better connected to their Heavenly Father. Um, we don't have to leave this program just unloading on all the dads of the no, world, do we? Not at all. Not at all. Thank God for forgiveness. <laughs> and thank you for being with us, Dan. Thank you. And thank you. If you'd like a copy of the book, uh, you can find it online. And uh, we w- are just happy that you could be with us today for this very, very important subject. And I hope that I'll see you again here next week. <laughs>